Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Hofsep and today we'll be discussing on what happens next after you achieve people's reject for DMARC. Now, it is a huge win uh, for your email security when you do enforce DMARC into reject, but it is not the end of the world. So what comes next? Um, stick around as we're gonna discuss and explore why it is very crucial to keep an eye on things when it comes to DMARC management and uh, how you can future-proof yourself from any evolving risks. Before passing to the main topic, let's briefly discuss how many policies DMARC has and what do they do. So DMARC has three policies, none, quarantine, and reject. None is the monitoring mode. This is where you want to get started with. Uh, under monitoring, you're gonna collect reports, you're gonna analyze outbound mail flow, and you're gonna configure the legitimate ones with SPF and DKIM. This is for the configuration process. Once you're done with this, you can then start the enforcement with the policy quarantine. What quarantine does is, uh, any outbound email that is failing the mark checks will be quarantined in the spam or the junk box of the recipient. And then the next step from there would be within a week or two weeks at least uh, is to enforce reject. Uh, now reject is kind of similar to quarantine, but it's not gonna keep the emails. It's gonna send them back. The, so any email that is not compliant with DMARC will be bounced back uh, to the original sender. Uh, ideally, this is where you want to be. This is the highest secure policy, um, and this should be the goal for every organization out there. But there are risks involved here, so let's discuss those. Discussing the risks involved here, the main one would be having your legitimate emails blocked, which can cause a lot of confusion for admins, system admins, managing outbound emails. And it, it could come in various scenarios. It could be a rushed DMARC project, uh, which is mainly majority of the cases, uh, or it could be changes in the uh, infrastructure itself or email service providers, uh, or even a third party service that uses ESPs to send out emails. So uh, let's discuss these uh, in a little bit more detail and look at some examples. So uh, a Rush DMARC project is pretty self-explanatory. There are a lot of requirements nowadays from Google, Yahoo, etc., uh, including uh, standards, protocols out there like the P PCI DSS and some departments of the finance uh, that require DMARC enforcement. A lot of organizations, what they do is uh, they're not aware that there's a, a, a lot of configurations involved with DCAMs and SPFs for when it comes to DMARC compliancy. So they rush the project, they skip a lot of configurations, and when they do actually enforce reject, uh, a lot of emails get blocked. So it is very important to take your time with the configurations and make sure everything is uh, is good to go before you start the enforcement. Uh, changes in the infrastructure, that could be either, uh, let's say a DNS migration, you're switching DNS providers, and during that process, some records might get issues or stuff like that, and then authentications when it comes to maybe SPF or most probably DCAM would fail, so you'll have issues. It's very crucial to take your time with that as well and make sure it's everything is good, everything is migrated over without any issues. Changes in the ESPs, email service providers. Uh, this is another uh, big case. For example, marketing teams, they use a lot of platforms to send out emails. They have a lot of options. Uh, maybe they're currently using MailChimp and they wanna switch to SendGrid down the road. Um, they, sh they should communicate that with the admins if they don't. Uh, communicate that the new platform, which is what they're gonna be using, is not configured properly, and when they do actually take that live and start using it, uh, those emails are blocked. So it's, it's important to make sure those are, uh, the, the changes in everything is communicated. And then lastly is just third parties. Now this is a different scenario than the ESPs. The third party is, uh, it could be, let's say, an invoicing system or something like that that they have their own ESPs that they use, but they're sending emails from your domain. So, uh, and if they do switch providers, you don't know about that. So 
emails will start failing again. Um, again, very crucial to make the necessary changes um, as in for finance or invoicing that important emails are gonna fail uh, DMARC compliancy and they're gonna be sent back and not delivered to the recipient. So uh, now that we've discussed these scenarios, uh, I would like to provide some tips and uh, on how to avoid scenarios like this. So some tips that we usually recommend our customers is uh, one uh, is to make sure all legitimate outbound mail flow is configured properly. Now for this, you can use the email investigation feature that we have. Uh, you can run some tests and make sure that SPF and DKIMs are aligned with the DMARC uh, compliancy. Uh, the second one would be to make sure that if, if any of the internal teams do get an NDR, a non-delivery report, to let you know about this, because uh, especially if those NDRs uh, include a DMARC um, compliancy issue, uh, saying DMARC failed on this specific email and it came from an actual legitimate source, you wanna look at that and configure it properly. Uh, now, um, in case of incident, you definitely wanna, um, you can switch policies. It's better if you do it with managed DMARC because uh, that usually is faster. Uh, you can downgrade the policy into none and then um, make sure the let's say the migration is done uh, properly and then you can upgrade it back into reject to make sure you don't have any incidents uh, and then uh, you can also like uh, tell the internal teams to communicate things properly with you uh, with changes uh, if they want to change an esp if they want to use a new one um, or they, they before like switching anything, they just want to use a new one and put that into live, put that into production and start sending out emails. You want to get those configured or make sure that they are configured before you, um, before they use it. And then lastly is to always keep an eye on the DMARC reports because they say a lot. Uh, if there's failures in there or new sources, you're gonna, most probably you're gonna see them pop up in the reports firsthand. Um, and this is where kind of easy DMARC steps in with the identification process. It helps you identify uh, if there's new sources involved uh, in your DMARC reports. So it's very important for an ongoing protection to keep an eye on the DMARC reports. Uh, so a lot of these issues uh, can be detected early on in the stages uh, by just reading the DMARC reports. Uh, Easy DMARC can help you out with that. We have the aggregate reports tab. So it combines a couple of tactics, the al algorithm that is parsing it, the configuration guides, and the source identifications that are working in the background. Uh, why don't we take a closer look so I can demonstrate how all this works. So looking at the aggregate reports tab, we can see a chart in here uh, telling us the outbound mail flow that we have from our domain. We have a lot of options here that we can filter things through, uh, export these data, and then upload them via manual XML files if we need it. But mainly the most important things here would be the four uh, different sections, the non compliant, non-compliant threat, and forwarded. So compliant would be the legitimate sources that are properly configured already. Uh, this is why the non-compliant tab would be the best uh, in terms of monitoring and analysis. This is where we filter things out with an algorithm so you can see only the sources uh, that are most likely legit and need your attention. So you're going to spend most of your time here identifying these, making sure uh, with the internal team that if these are legit, you want to configure them. And how do you actually do that is by clicking on these gear icons and going into the guides that we have on the configuration for them. Following this, you'll be able to get both SPF and DKIM set up for, in this specific case, SendGrid. And then when you do that, these should be uh, showing up under the compliant tab uh, in the upcoming days. In conclusion, achieving P equals reject is a great milestone for email security, but the real challenge lies in maintaining that level of security. You can do that by continuously keeping an eye on things with regular monitoring, timely alerts, continuous adjustments to stay secure. If you have any questions or issues, feel free to reach to our team at EasyDMark.